Right fellas, the first step for the Dead of the Night Easter Egg is to firstly go look into the crystals again. These are the crystals that you gaze into for opening Pack-a-Punch. And when you gaze into each crystal again, you're going to see a new item, and you're going to see a knight, you're going to see a circular object, almost like a mirror, and you're going to see some sort of twig stick statue. And these are the three quest lines for this easter egg. But before we start any of those three quest lines, you first need to go get some silver bullets. And if you don't know how to get silver bullets, check out my guide, I'll whack it in the description. So everyone in the game need to purchase silver bullets. Now you want to head to the cemetery, and on top of this building here, everyone in the game needs to shoot this rod on top of the building. And when you do that, a laser will shoot across the map, and it can complete the first step. So, you want to head to the spawn area, onto this balcony, and you're going to see three boxes appear. And if you take a closer look at one of these boxes, they're all the same, but you're going to see a wheel and two lights. One light on the left side, and one light on the right. So what you want to do is copy what I do here, and we're going to label each box and light as followed. So this box on the far left is going to be labelled as L1 and L2. This middle box is going to be labelled as M1 and M2, and the box on the far right will be labelled as R1 and R2. This diagram I made for you here is just perfect for this step. It makes it so much easier, so if you want to screenshot this you can, or pause the video, and it's going to be very helpful. So the first thing you're going to do is cross out on this diagram L2, M2 and R2, because if you do what I say, you're not going to need to touch any of those labels. So we're going to actually go do the step now and you want to follow exactly what I do here and if you do that you're going to boss it. So firstly you're going to come to M1 and M1 is the middle box and it's going to be the left light on this box here and all you do is spin this wheel until the green light brightens up fully on this statue. For me in my game as you can see, it took a lot of spins for me. It's going to probably take a lot of spins for you. But eventually, you're going to get that green light on the statue right in front of you to become very bright and it's going to become much bigger than it is. So that's what you need to do in your game. Spin that wheel until the green light becomes bigger and brighter. And as you can see in my game, this is what you want the green light to look like. Just copy what I do, fellas. So now you want to come to L1. And you want to turn this until the faded blue light on the left side fully disappears. Again, it might take a load of spins off the wheel on the L1 wheel. But it's going to eventually work. And as you can see in my game, the blue light on the far left has totally disappeared. And that's what you need to do in your game, fellas. So now you want to come to the R1 wheel. And you need to keep turning this until the red light on the statue becomes bigger and brighter. Again, it might take a lot of spins, but as you can see in my game, the red light has turned bigger and brighter, and that is what you want in your game, fellas. So now we're going to go back to M1 where we started, and we do the same again. We're going to turn M1 until the green light becomes bigger and brighter, and as you can see in my game, I have done that. So once you've done that, you want to go back to L1, and we're going to turn the wheel until the faded blue light on the far left fully disappears again. And this is what you want it to look like in your game, fellas. And then finally, you want to go to R1 again. And you need to turn the wheel until the red light becomes bigger and brighter one last time. And if you followed my every step and done it correctly, you should have completed this step, fellas. And then everything's going to blow up and all the bright lights are going to align and all going to become bigger and brighter. And there you go, fellas. That is a step complete. Right fellas, the second step in the Dead of the Night Easter Egg is actually pretty simple, but it just involves a lot of searching around rooms around the map for certain things. You're going to be finding a symbol and some scratch marks in a certain room around the map. There are six possible spawn locations, possible rooms around the map, where these symbols and the scratch marks can spawn. So for this step, there will be one symbol in each of the six possible spawn locations, and also there's going to be some scratch marks in those rooms as well. So firstly, I'm going to show you the locations of the symbols and the scratch marks, and then I'll tell you what to do after. So one spawn location for these symbols and scratch marks in this snooker room, and the symbol can spawn under this chess table here. And as you can see, the symbol was here in my game, but again, I'm just going to forget about that for now, and I'll tell you later in the video. So that's where the symbol can spawn. And now on to the scratch locations, and one scratch mark location is here in the snooker room to the left of this bookshelf here. 
and the scratch mark looks like this. Another spawn location in the snooker room is here on top of the bookshelf. It is pretty hard to see, but do a bit of parkour, jump up and down, you'll be able to see that one. And finally, in the snooker room, you can find some scratch marks under this table here on the right. Another room where a symbol and scratch marks can spawn are in the dining room. And the symbol can spawn on this pillar to the right of the door that leads out to the greenhouse. Just look carefully on this wall and it's going to be on there. And the scratch marks in the dining room are as followed. There's one location up here on the top of the wall right there where I'm pointing my gun. Some scratch marks can spawn here on the dining room table right here where I'm pointing my gun. And also some of these scratch marks can spawn here on the ceiling just out of the room where the dining table is and it can spawn up there. On to another room now and this one is the entrance hall. The symbol can spawn underneath this table here on the left. And on to the scratch marks now and these can spawn here to the right of the perk on this statue shield there. Also they can spawn on this wall here to the right of this painting just where I'm pointing my gun. And finally some scratch marks can spawn to the right of the teleporter on this wall here underneath the window. So on to another room in the map and this one is the master bedroom. So the symbol can spawn here to the right of this bookshelf with the skull on and it can spawn on this wall here. The scratch marks in this area can spawn to the left of the fireplace on this wall here. They can also spawn on the bedside table which is a very easy place to find. And finally some scratch marks can spawn in this window here above the bathtub and it's pretty tough to see as this so if you want to zoom in with your weapon do that. So yeah just above the bathtub on the green wall there. On to another room and this one is the wine cellar. And the symbol in the wine cellar can spawn here on the wine rack. It's on the bottom right shelf here. And then the scratch marks can spawn here on this barrel in the corner. Just next to the workbench and the window. Another location for some scratch marks can spawn on this cabinet here. To the right of the perk and on this cabinet here. And finally some more scratch marks can spawn on this big barrel here. Hidden away. They are quite hard to see but just look where I'm pointing and you'll find the location. On to another room and this is the library and the symbol can spawn on this wall here to the right of this pot. It's going to be engraved in the wall there. And the scratch marks can spawn here at the top right of this barricade. Pretty tough to see but it's going to be at the right top of the window there. Another scratch mark spawn is near this dinosaur statue. I'm going to show you it a bit slower because it's quite hard to see. But here is the dinosaur statue. There is a banister here. All you do is look between the banister and the scratch marks can spawn there. And finally, the last spawn location for some scratch marks in the library is here on this box near the sofa. And finally, on to the last room where these symbols and scratches can spawn. And this one is the main hall. The symbol can spawn here to the right of the stairs and the symbol will be engraved in the wall there. And the scratch marks can spawn above the fireplace here, which is a very easy location to find. Another location is near the doors towards the forest and if you do a 360 follow the route I take here and look up to the top left of this wall they can spawn up there and finally the scratch marks can spawn to the right of the grand staircase on this wall near the statue so that is all six locations I will now show you what to do and I'm going to show you my game footage and you can just follow along and I've got some charts and diagrams that you can screenshot and write out and it's going to be fucking awesome so fellas just like me in your game you want to save a zombie at the end of the round. And now you can go check the six locations that I've just showed you. So you want to get a notepad and pen out. And if you want to draw out this chart that I've drawn out for you, you can because it helped me so much. So now you've got all that ready, we can now do the step. So you want to go into each of the six locations that I've just shown you and find a symbol. For me in my game, the symbol was in the snooker room underneath the chess table. So I look at the symbol I draw it onto my chart and if you need help drawing out these symbols they are called zodiac symbols here is a chart of what they look like and yeah you can just draw them out and this is what they are fellas so yeah draw your symbol out on your chart and now all we do is go find the scratch marks in this area so I checked this wall here and there were some scratch marks so all I'm gonna do is count these up so there's one two three four five scratch marks on that wall so on my chart, I'm going to write down the number 5. 
Now I'm going to go to another scratch mark location in the snooker room. And it's on this wall here above the bookshelf. And for me and my game, there are another five scratch marks. So I'm going to put that on my chart, the number five. And finally, a look in the last scratch mark location in the snooker room. And again, there's another five scratch marks on the floor. So I'm going to put that on my chart. So now you look at your chart. And all you do is add up the number of scratch marks that you found in this area. And for me and my game, I do 5 plus 5 plus 5 and that comes to 15. So all we do is input the overall number onto the chart and that is that room complete. So that is all you need to do fellas. You need to find the symbol and then you add up all the scratch marks and write down the number. Simple as that. So now I'll go find another room and search for some more symbols and scratches. I searched the master bedroom and this is where my next symbol was. So I draw the symbol out on my chart and it's like a little H kind of symbol so it's pretty easy this one. And now I go find the scratch marks and add them up. So here are some scratch marks and there's a total of five here. This is to the left of the fireplace and the master bedroom. So there's five there and I'm going to write that on my chart. I then looked at the side of the bed and there's only three marks on here. So I'm going to write the number three on my chart. And then I look into the window above this bathtub and there's five scratch marks here on the wall. As I said earlier, it's quite hard to see this one, but zoom in and you can just see my five scratch marks on the wall there. And all I do is write the number five on my chart. So now I look at my chart and I've got the number five, the number three and the number five wrote down. I add them up. It comes to the number 13. Boss it fellas. So we're going to go find the last symbol now. And for me in my game, this one was in the library. And this one for me was quite hard to see because uh, it was engraved in the wall, but still pretty shitty engraved to be honest. But if you can't see the symbol, you can look at this chart that I'm going to put up again. You can screenshot this and you can just look at the chart, look at the symbol in your game and just see which one it matches up to. So yeah, this is my symbol and I'm going to put it on my chart. So now I go find the scratch marks in this area. And here is one spawn location for scratch marks, but sometimes they don't always spawn which is totally fine. So if you don't see scratch marks in a location, you just move on and go find the others. So for me, I'm going to go to the dinosaur location where some scratches can spawn. And this one's quite hard to see. But as you can see, I look through the banister and I can see four scratch marks on the ground. So I'm going to write the number four on my chart. And then I go look on this box here, the final scratch mark location in the library. And as you can see, there's only three scratch marks on this box. So I'm going to write the number three on my chart. So now I look at my chart again and I'm going to add the number four and the number three together to make the number seven. And there we go. The number seven corresponds to that symbol for the library. So it's fucking easy as this fellas. It really fucking is. So hopefully in your game you have something like this. You've got your chart, you've got your symbols and your numbers and it looks fucking organized. So now you've got your chart complete. You need to, if you want to draw out the chart again, because we're going to put the numbers from lowest to highest. So for me and my game, I'm going to look at my chart that I've completed. And I'm going to make a new chart. And I'm going to input the lowest number on the top of the chart. So for me and my game, it was this symbol and the number 7. So that's going to go top, because that's the lowest number. I'll look back at my chart. I'll put the second lowest number into my new chart, which was the number 13 and that H symbol. And then finally, the highest number will go last, and that is this weird symbol, and it's a number 15. So this is what you want, low to high. That is how you're going to complete this step. So once you've done that, you want to come to the greenhouse, and there's this telescope greenhouse machine. So you want to come up the stairs, and you can see this inputting machine here. And all you're going to do is input the lowest number first. And the lowest number for me was the number 7. And the number 7 for me corresponds to the symbol that was in that room. So all I do is press square on the telescope machine until my symbol comes up that corresponds to number 7. So here we go, I'm spinning it about, spinning it about, and eventually the symbol pops up and boom! There is my symbol. And all you do is merely punch the machine when your symbol appears, and that will input the symbol into the machine. So now we input our second lowest number into the machine and for me it was the number 13 and the symbol that it corresponded to was this letter H symbol. So all I do is spin the machine round until the weird symbol H comes up and when I find it I merely punch the machine and input that symbol. 
And now we have one more symbol, a number left, and this is the highest number. For me, the symbol is like a, a sideways C with a line at the bottom. So firstly, I'm going to find that on the machine. And when I find it, I'm going to merely punch the machine. And if you've done it all correctly, the machine will start going insane, the screen will go white, and you've bossed this step. If you input the wrong symbols into the machine, you will have to retry the whole step again. New symbols and scratches will spawn in different rooms. So like I said, you're going to have to do it all again. But if you have any questions, just comment. And that is the step complete. Right, fellas, for the third step in the Easter egg, you'll be in the greenhouse. You're going to need a shield. And if you can get the Alistair Annihilation Wonder Weapon, it's going to be the best thing in the fucking world. It'll save your life. It's the best weapon in the game. And if you don't know how to get that and the shield, my guides are in the description. So, come to the greenhouse and go upstairs. And all you do on this disc machine here where the wheel is, is press square to spin the wheel about four to five times. Just keep on spamming it. And then you want to melee the wheel with your shield. And the wheel on the machine should look a bit fucked up like this. So once you've done that, you want to head downstairs and you can see this electric trap here. So, get your shield out and you want to run to the electric trap. And you want to turn it on. And as fast as you can, go into the electric with your shield. And then you want to run as fast as you can up the stairs with the electrified shield. And all you do is merely the telescope. And if you do it correctly, you will see a bright light on your screen and you've bossed it. If you are in co-op, all players in the game need to do this at the same time. So for co-op, someone turn on the trap and then everyone in the game with their shields out run to the electric trap and everyone run upstairs and melee the telescope at the same time. So once you've done that, a stone slab will appear down below. And if we interact with this, it's going to begin a lockdown process where you can't leave, you're locked in the greenhouse and you're going to be killing zombies, vampires and werewolves. But before you do this, make sure you are set with some good perks, a new shield, some silver bullets, and if you can, get the Alistair's Annihilator with full ammo on. It's the best thing in the world. So that's what I have in my game, and I'm going to show you my technique to complete this. So when everyone is ready in the game, come to the stone slab, and everyone needs to hold square on the stone slab for about 5 to 10 seconds, and then it will start the lockdown process. So basically all you need to do is kill off the zombies for the first 30 seconds or so. Kill them and then vampires and the massive werewolves will spawn. Here is my hoarding technique that worked out pretty well for killing the werewolves. So what I did was easier in solo because I couldn't run into any players but this is what I did. So I would hoard up downstairs first and then I would bring the horde and the werewolves towards the stairs. And then I would go up the stairs, turn around take a few pop shots and then I would turn around and go stand on the edge of the platform and then I would take a few more pop shots and then I would drop down when the werewolves got a bit too close and then when you jump down turn around and you can get some decent shots on the werewolves this time and all I do is just repeat that process you want to be using the charge shots from the annihilator they work best and also, if you do this hoarding technique, just watch out for the zombies jumping up that platform if you take too long. But as you can see, it's working pretty well for me. And all you do is kill off all the werewolves. And when you kill the last one, a bright light will appear on the screen. And now, you can go to the stone slab, press square to get a max ammo, and that is a lockdown step complete. Right fellas, the fourth step in the Dead of the Night Easter Egg is to come to the cemetery and shoot five trees. When you shoot a tree, a branch will fall and all you do is pick it up. Very simple is this fellas, so you want to follow my route here and do exactly what I do. So, this tree here, as soon as you enter the cemetery, you want to look up and all you do is aim where I'm pointing my gun. And you shoot the branch, it's going to fall on the floor and all you do is pick it up. So now, follow my route, you want to go up the stairs here and you come to this next tree. Again, you look to the tree and shoot the branch where I shoot in my game. And you pick up the branch. And now you're going to follow my route and go to the other side of this circular area. And all you do is come to this tree here. Again, look where I'm pointing my gun. Shoot the branch off the tree and pick it up. And now you want to head downstairs. And in this area where the graves are, you can see this tree here. And all you do is shoot the tree where I'm shooting my gun. And the branch is on the floor to pick up. So now we have one more tree to go to. And if you see no branch is falling from the tree in your game... You've probably shot it down, so just look on the floor and pick it up. But this is the last tree, and this one is outside the mansion, and all you do is shoot or I shoot the tree, 
and you can pick up the last branch. So now for the next step, you're going to need the Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon. My guide is in the description, but hopefully you've already got that in your game. Right fellas, this next step is very simple, and I'm going to tell you how to do it in both solo and co-op. So, in co-op, if one of your players are the butler character, that person needs to find the butler's gravestone and press square on it. If no one in your game is the butler in co-op or solo, obviously, each character just has to find their own gravestone and press square on it. And if you are in solo, just go find your character's gravestone and press square. But here are the locations of the gravestones. In your game, just check every gravestone in this area in the cemetery because in your game, the locations are going to be different. But for me in my game, I'll show you where my gravestones spawn for each of my characters. So in my game, the main guy with the cowboy hat, who looks like Arthur Morgan, his gravestone is here in my game near the gate entrance to the cemetery. Now take a left and you'll come straight to the next gravestone which is the Charles Dance, the legend from Game of Thrones and that's the guy with the tash, that's his gravestone. Now take a left and follow the route I take and the butler's gravestone is here. This is the gravestone, if your character is a butler in co-op game you need to find this one. And then finally for me in my game I was the woman character so I had to go find her gravestone and her gravestone is right here. So just to remind you, in your game, if you're the butler, that person, go find your butler character on the gravestone. If no one's the butler, just go find your gravestone and press square on it. So when you press square on the correct gravestone in solo, you will need to come to the pile of sticks you collected. And what you do is stand near it, and it's going to turn into a Wicker Man statue. And in solo, with your Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon, you need to keep shooting charge shots until the fire effect appears. And when that appears, you don't want to shoot a charge shot again. All you do is press square on the wicker man and you're going to climb onto the statue. And in the co-op game, the person who is the butler has to get on the statue first. And then another player shoots the floor with the charge wonder weapon and will spawn that fire effect. And that is how you do it. Also in co-op, if none of you are the butler, just have the person who press square on the gravestone to get on the stick statue. And then the other player will shoot the floor with the charged shot of the wonder weapon, spawn that fire effect, and that is what you need to do. If you do it correctly, the person in the statue will start falling into hell. If you somehow failed this, you can press square on the gravestone again and retry this step. So when the person goes into hell and comes out of hell, that person will be invisible and is going to be a ghost. And that person has a certain amount of time to go around the map and find a ghost. And this ghost is going to be in a certain room or a window or near a perk machine around the map. And the best way to find the ghost is to have your audio turned up. And you want to be listening out for the girl ghost. And if you hear a girl talking, you are near the ghost location. So when you hear that voice, go look in windows in that area. But this is what happened in my game, fellas. Here is the footage. So there you go. Also, there's some more spawn locations that I do know because I've done this easter egg a few times. The entrance hall is a very popular spot where the ghosts can spawn. Just head towards the windows or towards the perk machine. Also, in my game you've got the master bedroom window here. Also down in the wine cellar, check every window there. I had a spawn in there. And also in the music room the ghosts can spawn. But if you can't find the ghosts in any of those locations, just go around every room in the map, look in every window, listen out for the girl ghost, look near perk machines and you'll find her. And if you run out of time, you just go back through hell and turn into a ghost again. So yeah, when you find the ghost, you need to stay close to it and follow it. The ghost will make its way to the cemetery, and when it reaches the cemetery, the ghost will stop near this wall, and then it will turn into flames, and on the floor, a stone slab will spawn. And in ghost mode, you want to press square on the stone slab to come out of ghost mode. And you've bossed it, fellas. And now, you don't want to press the stone slab again until you are ready. But if you do that, it will spawn a lockdown mission in the cemetery. So before you do this, make sure you've got good perks and you are set. You've got a new shield, a max ammo for all your weapons, especially 
that epic wonder weapon. Alice is Annihilator wonder weapon. You want to maxi on that. So when you're ready, everyone in your game holds square on the stone slab for about 5 seconds and that's going to start the lockdown mission. And so, all you do is kill off the vampires and the zombies for the first 30 seconds or so. And also that red vampire is going to spawn and he's a fucking bitch, I hate this lad. So whenever you see this red vampire throughout the lockdown or throughout your game, you want to turn your back to it, turn around every now and then, shoot it, turn back so it's not going to get you because... If you look at it for too long, it's going to jump on your face and fuck you up and you're going to die pretty much, so watch out for that. And running around the cemetery is your best bet here. Try save your wonder weapon ammo until the wolves spawn. And when the wolves do spawn, just take them out as fast as you can because when you kill these, the lockdown mission will be complete. So use your Alice as an hour later, spam it at the wolf. And when you kill the last wolf, your screen will go white and you've completed the lockdown mission. So now, go back to the stone slab, press square... And you're going to get a max ammo, and you've bossed that step. So fellas, the fifth step in the easter egg is to firstly, go find two of the trap calls that you can turn on traps, and these can be found around the map. These are what they look like, these are the black discs with an orange glow in the middle. So here are some spawn locations if you can't find any. So the entrance hall, one can spawn on this table here. They are very easy to find, so you're just going to find some dotted around the map. You want to check the floor, tables and chairs. In the main hall, they can spawn all around here on the tables and on the side walls. In the wine cellar, check the floor and on the barrels. And in the dining room, you can find some on the tables and chairs. And on the benches near the greenhouse, you can find some. And also on the benches at the cemetery. And also on a gravestone in the cemetery as well. So check all around the map and you'll find some. And you can check how many you have by opening your inventory. So now you've got two, we can start this step. So you're going to need a shield and the Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon. So firstly, come to the library, put one of your trap discs into the trap, and then you want to turn it on for 1000 points, and then you want to shoot a charge shot with your Alistair Annihilator Wonder Weapon at the trap flames to make them go blue. And with your shield, you want to get your shield out, go stand in the blue flames, and now your shield is a blue colour. And all you do is go merely four fireplaces as fast as you can. So the first fireplace is up the stairs and in the smoking room. You want to follow my route here and be as fast as you can. And all you do is merely this fireplace. And then you want to come back towards the library and you want to merely the right fireplace like I do here. And then you want to merely the left fireplace like I do here. And then finally, as fast as you can, you want to go back up the stairs and in the snooker room, you want to melee this fireplace and boom, you've bossed it. A blue gem will spawn in the fire and all you do is pick it up and that is one out of three complete. So for the next one again, save some zombies that end up round. You want to come to the master bedroom, insert your disc into the trap, turn on the trap for 1000 points, shoot the flames with a charged shot of your wonder weapon. Walk into the flames with your shield out. And now we go melee four fireplaces. So the first fireplace to melee is down in the main hall. So you want to follow the route I take here. Go down the stairs and melee this fireplace. And then you want to head back up the stairs. And at the top of these stairs you'll see another fireplace. You want to melee this one. And then you want to head all the way back down the stairs. Back into the main hall. And at the other side of the main hall. There's going to be this fireplace here. You can melee this one. And then take a left, you want to go up the stairs and the fireplace at the top of these stairs is where the last fireplace is. You want to melee that one and you've bossed it. And all you do is pick up the gem in the fireplace. So now for the final set of fireplaces, you want to come back to the master bedroom. You want to turn on the trap for 1000, shoot the trap with your charged shot of the wonder weapon, walk into the blue flames with your shield out, and then you want to follow exactly what I do here. So the first fireplace is in the bedroom, you want to go merely this one, and then you want to go back to where you turn on the trap, and there's a fireplace right here. And then you want to head all the way to the music room, you want to follow the route I take here, you take a left out of the master bedroom, you go over the balcony, and in the music room, here's the fireplace, merely that one, and you've bossed that. And then you want to head all the way to the dining room fireplace. So you want to follow the route I take here. Go down the stairs into the main hall. Take a right. Go through this corridor here. And you're going to come to the dining room. 
and the fireplace is right here in the dining room. You want to melee this with your blue shield and you've bossed it and you can pick up the final gem. So now you've got three gems picked up fellas. At the end of the round you want to come to this statue in the main hall. You want to press square on the statue and the statue will crumble and the gem will spawn. And this gem will follow you every move. Don't move too far away from it or it's going to stop. So that'll be shit if you fucking lost that, wouldn't it? But yeah, keep the gem close. And now you want to keep the gem following you. And you want to go to another statue. And this statue is towards the greenhouse. So again, keep that blue gem behind you. Don't go too fast. And when you get to the greenhouse, you want to take a right. And the statue is right here, fellas. So you want to press square on the statue. It's going to crumble. And a second blue gem will spawn. And now you've got two gems following your every move. You want to take those two gems to the cemetery where the last statue is. So here is the statue. It's as soon as you come into the cemetery. Take a right and the statue is there. Press square on the statue. And the statue will start to crumble. And the third blue gem will spawn. So now you want to keep these three gems close to you. And you want to head all the way to the forest where pack punch is. So when you get to the forest, you want to take a left. And you want to lead the gems to the circles on the floor in the forest. So you want to walk over this left side of the forest. This circle here. One blue gem will hover on that circle. And now head to the other side of the forest. And you want to make another gem. Lock on this circle here. And now in the middle of the forest. You want to lead the last gem into the middle of the circle. And boom. That is three of the gems hovering in three locations. And when the gems hover over the location, they are going to turn into statues. And these are ghost statues. And you need to feed them zombie kills for them to move and to complete this step. So we're going to be getting some zombie kills near each of the three statues. And we want these three statues finishing up next to Pack-a-Punch. So the best thing to do here is my technique. And you want to hoard up zombies in the main hall. And then you want to bring the horde towards the forest. And then you want to go to one of the statues and kill some zombies near the statue. Every five zombie kills will make the statue teleport closer to Pack-a-Punch. So you want to get five kills near a statue, it's going to move. So you can go to another statue, kill some more zombies near that statue, get five kills near that. It's going to teleport closer to Pack-a-Punch. And then go to a completely new statue, get five kills near that. It's going to teleport towards Pack-a-Punch and just keep repeating that process. As you know, there are three statues, and each statue is going to take about 10 to 15 kills to get a pack a punch. So, this is what you want the statues to look like. You want the ghost statues looking at pack a punch, and you're going to see the blue triangle going through each of the statues. This is what you want, fellas. So, when this happens, you want to bring a wolf inside the triangle, and you're going to kill the wolf in the triangle, which is quite hard. But what I did was do a bit of damage to the wolf outside of the triangle bring him to the forest, and then I killed him inside the triangle. And when you kill the wolf inside the triangle, a stone slab will spawn, and this is a stone slab to start a lockdown process. So before you press the stone slab, you want to make sure you're ready with some good perks, a new shield, max ammo especially, for your wonder weapon. But when you're ready, everyone in your game, go press square on the stone slab, and that will start the lockdown mission. So for this lockdown process, you will see the gems that you brought to the forest. They're going to be flying about this forest. And all you do is get kills near those gems. And then eventually, after enough kills near the gems, the wolves will spawn. The best tactic to survive this lockdown process is to do a massive circle around the forest. That is the best hoarded technique that worked for me. And then you want to watch out for the red vampires that do spawn sometimes. Those are the ones that can... Jump onto your face and fuck you up. So you want to watch out for them. But yeah, kill off the wolves. And when you kill off the last wolf, the screen will go white. And you've bossed that lockdown step. So all you do is go back to the stone slab. Press square on the stone slab to get a max ammo. And you've bossed that step. So fellas, now you've completed all three lockdown missions in the forest, greenhouse and cemetery. You are now ready for the boss fight. And this will be my solo boss fight guide. And my setup was as followed. So I had the best weapon in the game. I had the Alistair's Annihilator Wonder Weapon with full ammo. I had the Rocket Launcher Packer Punched with full ammo. I had a new shield. Perk wise I had Stamina Up and Dying Wish. 
And I was hoping to get those monkey bombs in the box, but I've never got them in the fucking game, which is bullshit. And also, I had a max ammo elixir, which helped me a lot in the boss fight. So that's all I had. So when you're ready, you want to come to the forest, and you'll see this circular door with all three symbols glowing. Everyone in the game needs to hold square on the circular door for about 10 seconds, and you're going to enter to the boss fight. So here is my clearest, not rush, detailed guide for you fellas, just to make it as easy as possible. So, there are three stages to the boss fight, and they're really simple. So the boss itself is an invisible wolf, which is pretty random. But we need to somehow make him visible for us to see, to then shoot. So the first step, the first stage in the boss fight, is to move three grey lights, so they are aiming onto the green square on the floor. So all you do is see where the green square is on the floor first, and then you can see the grey lights around the map. There's three grey lights on three different statues, and you need to turn them left or right to make them aim towards that green square on the floor. To turn a grey light on the statue is very simple. You want to press square on the left of the grey light to make the grey light go left. And then, to make it go right, you press square to the right of the grey light. So yeah, you want to turn all three grey lights so they are facing towards the green square on the floor. So look what I do here. I go to one grey light, turn it left towards the green square. And then I run to a next grey light, turn that left towards the green square. And then boom, as you can see, all grey lights are now green. And that is what you want, fellas. And when this happens, you can now go inside the green square on the floor. And you want to let the invisible wolf come to the green square where you are. You want to kill off the zombies and eventually the invisible wolf will appear in the green square. And now this is where you can shoot and do as much damage as you can to the wolf. The wonder weapon or the rocket launcher, you want to just fucking spam it. Spam it like fuck at the wolf. Be a mad bastard and then the wolf will fuck off. So now you just repeat that whole process again. A new green square will spawn on the floor but in a different location. So now you go turn those grey lights to face towards the green square on the floor. So here I go fellas, I'm running around the area. I'm turning all the grey lights to face the green square and boom, I've bossed it fellas. All grey lights are now green and now I go inside the green square, kill off the zombies and the best tactic is to shoot charge shots at the floor at the zombies while you're waiting for the invisible wolf to spawn. So again the wolf will appear and you do as much damage as you can to the wolf. You can step out of that square, go as far away as you can, and fucking pop some shots. And then the wolf will fuck off again. And then you do the whole process again. A new green square will spawn on the floor. You want to get those grey lights facing towards the green square. And then, when all grey lights are green, get the wolf inside the square, and do as much damage as you can to the wolf. So then again in my game I had to repeat that same process for a fourth time. I got the wolf inside the square and this time I completed the first stage of the boss fight. I did enough damage for the wolf to fall over and when this happens you've done the first stage of the boss fight. So now the second stage will spawn and if you do need a max ammo you can go get it from the corner of the arena. So in this second stage there's no grey lights to move which is less stressful. And all you do is kill off the zombies, the baby wolves, and also the red vampires will spawn. About two or three of these will spawn, and these are the vampires that can jump on your face and fuck you up. So when you see these spawn, don't look at them in the eye, or they're going to fuck you up. Only turn around with a charged shot of your wonder weapon, shoot the red vampire, turn back around, and that's the best tactic to kill that fucker. The best hoarding technique is to... Just go around this arena in a massive circle. That is the best tactic and best advice I've got for you to complete this whole easter egg step. But yeah, the second stage is pretty simple really. There's no puzzles about it. Just kill off the wolves. And also, try not let the zombies damage your shield. Because you're going to need as much health on your shield as you can for the last step of the boss fight. And also, my dying wish perk saved my life in the boss fight. On the second step here, the red vampire jumped on me, and when this happens with Dying Wish, you're going to have 1% of health left, so that is why I've got that perk on, and it saved my life. But yeah, I killed off the last of the wolves in the second stage, and you've completed that, and the grey lights will spawn again for the third step of the boss fight. 
So the third step of the boss fight is where it gets a lot tougher. So it's the same kind of process as the first step with the green square, but now the green square is invisible. Along with the invisible wolf, so it's fucking tough. So yeah, for this third step, what you need to do is find the invisible green square. So, go around each of the three grey lights, and just keep on changing the direction of these, until the green square appears on the floor, and one of the grey lights go green. So when you see the green square appear on the floor, this is where you can go to the rest of the grey lights, make them face the green square, and yeah, just like the first step, make all three grey lights turn green, and then you want to get inside the green square, get the invisible wolf to appear in front of you, and then be as fast as you can, doing as much damage as you can to the wolf. And also fellas, a good tip in this step is, be as fast as you can, um, making those green lights go green towards the green square, because you have a certain amount of time until the green square fucks off, and it turns into a different location, a different invisible location, and all the grey lights will reset, and you've got to find that green square again, so bear that in mind fellas. So when the wolf disappears, you have to find that green square, the invisible green square again, but also bear in mind that a red vampire is going to spawn each time after you do damage to the wolf, so you want to watch out for the red vampire, so my advice is to kill off the red vampire first, and then as fast as you can, you want to find the green invisible square and do the step. Also, try save your ammo as well, don't shoot your wonder weapon unless you're in massive trouble, save the ammo for the wolves and the red vampires. So for a second time, I found the green square, and then I moved the grey lights towards the green square, and then I got the invisible wolf inside the green square, how many times am I saying fucking green square, and then I shot the wolf as much as I could, and then the wolf will fuck off, and another red vampire will spawn, and it's basically the same process repeating itself. So the whole process is basically, when the wolf disappears, kill the red vampire, and as fast as you can, find that invisible green square, Turn all the grey lights towards the green square, make all the grey lights go green, get inside the green square, and get the wolf inside it, and shoot it as much as you can. And if you need a max ammo, in the corner of the room is that max ammo, but only get it when you're totally out of ammo. So fellas, I'm on to my third time shooting the wolf in the green square, and I've run out of ammo already, after getting that one from the corner of the arena, so that elixir saved my life. I don't know if over time a max ammo will spawn in the arena, but this max ammo, you want that as a elixir in the game. And then I got the green wolf in the green square for a fourth time. And then I got the wolf in the green square for a fifth time. And as you can see here, it takes, it takes more than the first step. In the first step, you, you got him in the square three or four times. In this one, it's going to be five or six times. And then finally, I got the wolf in the green square for the sixth time. And I fucking bossed it, fellas. I went insane. So keep repeating that same process and eventually you'll do enough to damage and kill the wolf and the easter egg is complete. You'll be shown a cutscene and you'll get the trophy. So thanks for watching fellas. I was so happy when I did this fucking solo easter egg. It was so tough but a really good easter egg as well. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you later.